a trade, an expected roster move, plus a busy week to recap and preview all coming up today on Locked on Wild. You're locked on wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast, part of the Locked On Sports Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. Just as a reminder, Locked on Wild is available on your favorite podcast platforms for absolutely no charge. On today's episode of Locked on Wild, we recap the week with Alex Micheletti talking about the Ryan Reeves trade, the expected sending of Marco Rossi to Iowa. Plus, we'll take a look back at games this past week and preview what's coming up here this week as well. My name is Seth Topol, your daily Minnesota Wild insider, and as mentioned, joined by Alex Micheletti today, a victory Micheletti Monday, thanks to yesterday's 4-3 to three win in which Wild had to kind of hang on for a victory in that one. But Alex, hope you had a chance to uh, have a great Thanksgiving. I know I certainly did, and uh, of course, plenty for us to dive into here on today's show. Oh yeah, yeah, it was great. Uh great holiday weekend lots of uh, lots of good food and uh good football good hockey uh so yeah lots lots of fun let's dive right into the the big one because we'll we'll have plenty of time to talk about what happened on the ice minnesota wild making a trade for ryan reeves formerly of the new york rangers an agitator that's about all he brings at least on paper. So we're going to talk about this because the reaction has been wide ranging uh, to this move. And for Reeves, he was acquired for a 2025 fifth round pick. So the draft pick is down the road. That's that's not the thing to take away from this trade. Uh, the big reactions are A, the Wild made a move. B, it was a move that did not address i think the biggest issue and so um alex what do you think of the decision to bring ryan reeves in to give this wild team a little bit of a jolt yeah yeah people people know my thoughts on reeves um but uh you know i don't know um you know like you like you mentioned the only thing he really brings is to be an agitator out there i guess uh he's not gonna score um you just hope that uh he plays responsibly. Um, you know, that doesn't take dumb penalties. He took a dumb penalty against Toronto, but uh, didn't he didn't really do much, you know, today. Um, but, uh, um, you know, he's always been known as a good locker room guy and uh, energy guy. And, you know, that's he has history with Billy, Billy Guerin. So, uh, you know, it makes, makes sense just from his perspective. Um, and, you know, like you said, um, you know, uh, it's not the move that everybody wants to see. Um, you know, especially uh, we've we've kind of seen now. Um, you know, when when they play really really good teams, um, you know, they they struggle, um, and they can they can beat the teams that aren't expected to do much right now. Um, Arizona, um, you know, is a bottom feeder, um, and. Um, you know, uh, who knows with Winnipeg, um, but, uh, that was a good, good win, uh, cause Winnipeg after losing, um, <laughs> went on a, a couple of game heater <laughs> after that loss. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, we'll see where it goes. Um, you know, if they do, if the wild do make the playoffs, uh, Reeves does have, uh, you know, playoff experience as well too. So I'm sure again, you know, it's a, it's a, you know, uh, a veteran in the league, um, and that's what they were kind of looking for. And then hopefully find a, uh, you know, another top six forward. Um, you know, if it's not a center, a scoring wing to help, uh, um, you know, replace uh, the Fiala offense. Yeah. And so the trade tells me a couple of things mm -hmm. is that number one, this team is in make the playoffs now mm -hmm. mode. And 
we expected that would be the case right. coming into this season, but that hasn't that hasn't shifted based off of how the team has done so far this season, you know, floating kind of up or around 500 so far. Mm -hmm. So the Reeves acquisition gives Dean Evison a veteran that he can go to, but also somebody that if he has maybe an off day um, where he gets scratched, it's something that was happening in New York. So it's not something that's going to super upset him at this point, but with the roster move that we'll talk about, the expected sending of Marco Rossi down to Iowa, it tells you that uh, that Dean probably at this point prefers to have some more veteran guys in the room to be able to kind of help pull this team to where they want it to go, but also then so you don't have a rookie sitting on the bench for four straight games. And we'll talk about that more <laughs> in a little bit. But my big thing with this move is that unless you go get somebody to help the scoring, it really doesn't serve you much other than having a guy in the lineup that's got some beef to be able to help out when that's an issue. Whether or not they went out and got Ryan Reeves, scoring goals is still a problem. And so... If they do something else that you can stack above the Ryan Reeves acquisition, if they if they check that box and Reeves becomes kind of that supplementary piece to add underneath, good, great, fine. But if they go through and they're like, you know, we're going to take the size and that's going to help us out, but we're just going to – we're just going to put it on the players to – bring the scoring up themselves. That's probably not going to work. No. Um, and um, if we want to see this team go to where we think they can, um, a, a, a scoring forward has to be acquired. Um, otherwise, it's a first-round exit. Uh, because um, as we've seen in the playoffs, uh, you know, the opposing team's main goal is to, to shut down Kaprizov's line. And, um, you know, Kaprizov had an amazing – uh, series against St. Louis, but uh, not many around him were, were <laughs> Fiala was, you know, went missing. Um, Zuccarello didn't do much. Um, so, um, yeah, they're going to need uh, another scoring forward to help that top line out or be a part of that top line. Um, we don't know about Ryan Hartman yet. Um, you know, it's still a mystery. We don't even know what it's hurt, what he's hurt. Um, so, you know, at some point, uh, you know, you know, that Dumba contract's going to be tough to move, but you might be forced to move uh, some prospects. And, um, you know, the Wild have a ton of prospects, um, a ton of D prospects. Um, you know, it's kind of getting jammed up at the moment. And, uh, you know, you got Carson Lambos and uh, Brock Faber ready to make that next step. Um, so, you know, you can afford to, to trade a defenseman and try to get some type of scoring forward. Um, you know, that would be ideal. Um, you know, look at, look for teams, you know, like Anaheim, Buffalo, that uh, Ottawa, <laughs> Chicago. Um, yeah, so you know, San Jose. So that San Jose is definitely a team that I think the Wild, uh, you know, should keep their eye on. Um, they have a guy like Logan Couture who continues to put up points out, out that way. Um, that would I think would be a good fit uh, for the Wild. So, yeah, we'll see. It's a move, and we'll we'll leave you with this. It's a move that, if that's all they do, not uh, not enough. But if the Wild do get some scoring help, and then they can use Reeves to help mm -hmm. um, in the physicality department. All right, B. All right, Billy G. We see you. <laughs> um, but until that happens, you really just. Are, we're just going to see what we get from Ryan Reeves and hope that he's not called upon to uh, to add to the scoring punch. But the other part of this, of course, is the – and it hasn't been announced yet. It's expected it was going to be announced Monday morning, Marco Rossi being sent to Iowa. And so we'll unpack all that as well as we continue today's episode of Locked on Wilds after this.
If you've thought about securing your home with home security but have been putting it off, you're going to want to take a listen to this. Right now, Locked on Wild listeners can order the number one rated Simply Safe home security system for 50% off. This is their biggest offer of the year, and you won't want to miss it. Whether you are a first time home buyer trying to give yourself peace of mind and set the stage for a lifetime of home security, or a long time homeowner looking to up your peace of mind while you are out and about, Simply Safe can give you just that. And in fact, Simply Safe was named the best home security system of 2022 by U.S. News and World Report for a third year in a row. In an emergency, 24 7 professional monitoring agents. Use fast protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify that a threat is real so you can get priority police response. Don't miss your chance to save big in the only security system I recommend. Get 50% off any new Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL today. This is their biggest discount of the year, so don't wait. That's simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Continuing today's episode of Locked on Wild, once again, thanks for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day for your second listen. Make sure you take in the Locked on Sports Today podcast, all of the biggest stories, all the biggest games, everything you as a sports fan need to know. The Locked on Sports Today podcast is available on your favorite podcast platforms absolutely free of charge. Seth Topol joined by Alex Micheletti for today's episode. And we better get into the big one <laughs> because uh, it is going to be making the rounds today in wild Twitter circles, wild social media circles. Uh, it is expected that what we had been expecting for about a week is now going to happen with Marco Rossi being sent down to Iowa. And I think I think the biggest thing, Alex, for me is it's too early. It's too early to label this a failure. But I think the thing that has let Marco Rossi down the most so far is that this wild team is, as we saw with the Ryan Reeves addition, this team is still in playoff now mode. And so that has led to his ice time being sporadic. And at this point, his best case, his best course of action is to go down to Iowa and to play and to get him kind of back offensively to where this team had hoped he would be and try it again. Yeah, I mean, it makes no sense uh, for him to be sitting in the press box. Um, You know, he's a 21-year-old. He needs to be playing. Get get on the top line there in Iowa. Go to work. Um, you know he dominated the AHL when he was down there. Um, you know get back to feeling good um, and feeling good about his game. Um, I hope when he does get called back up here, I hope he gets a chance on the top power play. Um, maybe that will help help him a lot. Um, you know get him in spots where he can uh, have you know high opportunities of scoring. Um, you know, when he's up here, it doesn't make much sense to play him on the fourth line either. Um, you know, that does him no good. Um, and everybody has to remember that, um, you know, this is the hardest league in the world to play in. Um, you know, it doesn't come easy to everybody, um, right away. Um, look at, uh, Eric Snack. Um, you know, it took him a long time. Um, and now look at how well he's playing. Everybody thought he was a bust when he was um, uh, first starting off in the league, um, and so it takes guys, uh, you know, a while to to find their fit and where to, you know, where to find, uh, you know, the spaces on the ice to, that you can thrive in and, and, and score from. And uh, um, you know, he's still, you know, he's still twenty one. Um, you know, he can get yeah. stronger. Um, you know, he's got to be stronger with the puck along the boards too, um, you know, and that, you know, that, that, you know, that takes experience. Um, and so, you know, hopefully with more, more time in the HL, um, you know, he can work on his game and, and, and feel more confident. Um, it's all about confidence in this league too. Um, you know, when you get in a gro- good groove, good goal scoring um, streak, 
you look at Kaprizov, he's got a nine game scoring streak. You know, he's on a heater, um, scoring streak going. So, um, yeah, uh, we wish Marco all the best. Uh, I'm sure he's extremely bummed out. Uh, you know, like I mentioned on Twitter, this in the long run, um, you know, this will be, you know, the best for him. Um, and, you know, I hope, I hope he realizes it too. Um, and, uh, he's got a long way to go. Um, this is definitely not, you know, the end of Marco Rossi at all. No, a hundred percent not. And I think it's frustrating for fans. It's frustrating for mm-hmm. us to cover the team because we had such high expectations for him coming in. And I mean, he was out there during the preseason. He played with a bunch of different teammates and led the NHL in points. It's not a fluke. Mm-hmm. It just – it, and not a lot of it is, is even his fault per se. It's falling behind by such large deficits early in games that you end up getting to where you are not playing the line that he was on because you're trying to get more opportunities for your top guys to score to try to pull you back into the game. There's nothing he can do about that. The coaching staff said as much as well as that he's doing really good things defensively. He was winning draws. And so that's not anything that is his fault. The one thing that I see, and I, I don't really know the answer to it, is the people that say, well, what is Freddie Goudreau doing up on the top line? What is Sam Steele doing up at the top line? I get that. Marco Rossi is ultimately supposed to be a better player than those guys. But for a coach who is trying to turn this into a playoff team that is not worried about the development side of things at this point, Freddie Goudreau and Sam Steele really haven't done anything to warrant being pulled out of the lineup. No. <laughs> and they've, uh, they have experience in the NHL. Um, you know, Freddie's been with multiple organizations. Uh, Sam Steele was a first round draft pick too. And uh, he has experience with Anaheim um, and playing a lot with Anaheim. And so, you know, I obviously uh, they aren't, uh, not only are either Sam Steele or Goudreau top line guys, they aren't top six guys. Um, you nope. know, in an ideal situation, they'd be, you know, top nine or, uh, you know, the fourth line. Um, so, um, but that's, that's where the wild are at right now. Um, and that's what happens when you have two huge buyouts. Um, you know, just think you know of the money that they could use, um, you know, from that buyout money to help get a, you know, a top six center. Um, you know, unfortunately they can't do that. Um, and they're living with it, um, but they're, they're trying to make it, uh, what they're 500 right now. Um, so uh, we have a really interesting stretch coming up here too. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how this team navigates uh, some tougher opponents. Um, and it's a good thing Flurry's back um, because, uh, you know, he's your top guy no matter what. Um, you know, Gustafson has been playing well, but, you know, Flurry Flurry's the guy. Yeah, 100%. And I want to bring this up because I'm, I'm not trying to – and I hope people don't take it as me trying to be revisionist history here – is it was pretty well documented that – when the buyouts happened for Parisian suitor, that you were going to get some initial cap relief that was going to allow you an opportunity for a couple of seasons to be competitive and to fight for a playoff spot. And the final couple of years of those buyouts, it was just going to be, it, it was going to be tricky to be able to do anything close to being competitive for a playoff spot. And so the wild are in that second year of that to where it's, it's going to be tricky, but you can still maybe fight for a playoff spot. So that's where this team is at right now. This is, it's that weird kind of balancing point of once playoffs are no longer an option, that's when you'll start to see some of the turnaround. And if this team is not competitive by the trade deadline, that's where moves get made that we have been hoping to see for a while. Um, But until that point, this team's going to fight like heck to 
try to make the playoffs with mostly the same group that they had last year. So I, I get it. Fans are frustrated with a lot of what we're seeing here. But at the end of the day, for this season right now, right now, playoffs are the goal for this team. And until that changes, you're going to see things done in a way that a playoff team would do them. Whether it's whether you like it or not, and I don't agree with some of the things that we've seen. That's pretty well documented. But that's how this team's going to operate. Yeah, that's how Billy Garen operates. <laughs> I mean, um, I don't think we'll ever see this in uh, in Craig Leopold too, uh, the man with the money. Um, I I I don't see either of those two guys saying, "Let's just let's just tank." Um, that's not how this organization has ever operated, uh, clearly, um, because they've never, you know, they've never been a, you know, in in the top two or three in in the entry draft. Um, so they're they're just a, you know a team that's gonna hover um, right there on the on the wild card line, um, um, and we'll see if they're able to to get that uh, um, you know top six four that we're all clamoring to see on this squad and uh, and we'll see if it's the end of Matt Dumba, um, you know, cause you know, we talk about the buyouts all the time, but you know, that Dumba contract is obviously hindering this team tremendously. His play has fallen off the face of the earth. Um, and you see like a game like today um, where they have to go 11 and seven again, <laughs> which um, it's very frustrating because, um, you know, then, you know, someone's double, double shifting a lot and, and guys can get tired easily doing that. Um, if they have to do that multiple games, it's not an ideal situation at all. Um, so we'll see, hopefully that doesn't continue. Yeah. It's, it's not ideal in the slightest, but, uh, if you can limit the number of too many men on the ice penalty <laughs> that you take as a team that, uh, that really helps. Mm -hmm. And so I don't think, I don't think the wild got any because Marcus Foligno had all the penalty <laughs> minutes in Chaos. one play, which uh, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit to finish off the show because that was just bizarre. So <laughs> we'll talk about that. We'll set the stage for the rest of the week as we finish up today's episode of locked on wilds after this. Today's episode is brought to you by BetOnline.net. They are your number one source for sports betting info plus stats, news, and analysis. You can get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. From football to basketball to soccer to esports, they've got it all at BetOnline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at BetOnline as well. They are always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. So head over to their website today or use your mobile device to learn more at Bet Online where the game starts. Final segment of today's episode of Lockdown Wilds. Once again, thanks for making Lockdown Wilds your first listen each and every day. Seth Topol and Alex McLeddy rounding out the show. Wild did get back into the win column against the Arizona Coyotes. Four to three. They led four to one until the final four minutes of the game. And the Coyotes able to score a couple of times to make it interesting. But uh, the Wild did hang on for the win. Uh, as I alluded to, <laughs> Marcus Felino with <laughs> the Herculean penalty minute effort um, the, right away to start off the second period. He gets double minors. Two minutes for unsportsmanlike, two minutes for roughing, five minutes for fighting, and then a 10-minute misconduct penalty because he went after the refs because he didn't think that the penalty was called appropriately. And for a team that was playing 11 and 7 to begin with, Wilder lucky that that, uh, that didn't end up costing them. Yeah, they're lucky they were playing a team like Arizona uh, that doesn't have a ton of firepower. Um, they're scrappy. Um, they're not your uh, Arizona teams of old, um, uh, you know. But clearly, they still don't have uh, the firepower, um, you know, because if that was a, um, you know, if that was an Edmonton, <laughs> um, 
uh, that game could have got out of, out of hand uh, the other way, um, you know, where the Wild are giving up a couple of goals. Um, so, yeah, they they lucked out for sure. Um, <laughs> thank God it didn't cost them. Um, and, uh, you know, you know um, I think Felino <laughs> knows he can't be doing that going forward. No. Got to gotta just keep an even keel. But um, ultimately, Kaprizov, Matt Boldy, Sam Steele, uh, and the other goal, Jared Spurgeon. Yes. The other the captain. Goal, <laughs> was enough to uh, to get the Wild to win here uh, in this one. Now, we saw a couple of starts from Marc-Andre Fleury. A little rusty against the uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs. Mm-hmm. Looked better, I thought, against Arizona, but ultimately didn't face that many shots until late in the game. Right. And like you alluded to, he's going to be the guy for this team. That was not in question coming into the season. But you get a tough couple of – well, you've got just an absolute meat grinder <laughs> here uh, to start off the month of December. Wild host Edmonton. Then they host the Ducks on Saturday, and then it is a lovely four-game road trip at Dallas, at Calgary, at Edmonton, at Vancouver, before returning home on December 12th to take on the Edmonton Oilers again. So we get that three-game Edmonton sandwich. That makes no sense, by the way. I was like, I was looking at that. I was like, really? We have to see Connor McDavid three times <laughs> in that scene? I, I don't. I don't get it, but there are a lot of things with the schedule that I don't really understand. And so let's, let's look at that Edmonton game. First and foremost, the Oilers, they have the scoring. We knew about that Um, 11 and 10 on the season. So obviously they are not playing up to the level that they had hoped they would be after a really good season last year. Uh, But it's still, it's still a very dangerous Edmonton team, regardless of who's in the net. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Jack Campbell was their big signing um, in the offseason because Mike Smith uh, retired just with all <laughs> with all the injuries and <laughs> the up and down play <laughs> for, for him. And so they thought, hey, uh, we'll take Jack Campbell, um, who was decent with Toronto. Nothing, nothing great, uh, clearly in the playoffs <laughs> for Toronto. But uh, yeah, yeah. Um, he, he hasn't been he hasn't been what they were expecting at all um you know and uh you know they play uh, for example they played the rangers on saturday um you know it was campbell versus, versus igor uh she's twerking as as we know <laughs> um, from a great great twitter moment um in great the past i joke by the way yes yes um and the rangers were up three nothing um in in the third period and the Oilers scored four times in the third period to win that game. So, um, you know, they they can score. <laughs> they have the firepower. Um, it's their goaltending, as always. Um, that's going to be a question mark. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Um, you know, they are missing Evander Kane, too, um, from that cut – <laughs> cut uh from the skate which was gruesome uh Oof. you know we hope we hope he's okay um you know he has a lot of, a lot of issues but uh we clearly obviously we hope uh, evander's okay um and he recovers fast because you never want to see something like that um oh. and uh yeah <laughs> the wild better hope to have Jonas Brodin uh prepared for those games uh he usually shows up pretty well against Connor mcdavid and, and dry Seidel and Stay out of the box against that team. Yeah, it's going to be yeah. interesting for sure. Yeah, it's it's got to be a it's got to be near the top of the list in terms of effort in this game and just making sure that everybody knows their assignments um, and and are not missing them. Now, after the Edmonton game, the Anaheim Ducks come to town to uh, finish off the road trip, and a little birdie told me that uh, John Gibson may have been hobbled in their uh, their most recent game. And so that could lead to the Wild having to go up against something called Anthony Stolarz, whose numbers are slightly better than Gibson. But we saw this Anaheim team recently, and for the Wild when they were at their, I think, low point in terms of struggling to score goals, still made it look super easy against that Anaheim team. Yeah, Cramarosa scored. <laughs> so <laughs> he 
you know, you know that it's a good night when he's scoring. Um, you know, they turn over a ton of pucks. Um, there's, they have some skill, um, but they're clearly not there fully yet. Um, you know, Troy Terry and Zegers are, you know, as good as it gets. Um, but, um, you know, like Edmonton, sometimes uh, it takes more than two guys, you know. Um, and so you feel bad for Gibson. Um, he gave up, you know, they lost five to four. Um, you know, the Kraken are one of the surprise teams in the league. Yeah. Um, they have the sixth best record in the league. You would never think that. It's probably because they're out there in Seattle. Um, we don't see them a whole lot on national TV, but, uh, you know, they got a good thing going right now. So, you know, credit to them and, you know, Maddie Beneers, uh, one of the rising stars in, in the NHL. But, uh, yeah, um, it's a, it's a must win for the, for the wild to beat Anaheim. Everybody's beating up on Anaheim. Um, and so, <laughs> Uh, they need to take advantage. We just saw St. Louis play Anaheim a couple times and and beat them twice. And and look at how well St. Louis is is playing now after their slow start. Um, you know, they were another team that was down uh, four to one uh, to Florida, um, and they came back and won won that won their game too. So there was there was a couple of crazy you know a couple of crazy games in the NHL on, on Saturday. A lot lots of high scoring for sure. Um, Jeepers! And then yeah. we f- we finish off the week with the top team in the central division, Mm -hmm. the Dallas stars and firepower that they bring to the table with Jason Robertson. You've got, you got that top line combo of uh, Jason Robertson. You've got Joe Pavelski. You've got Jamie Ben all with double digit goals so far, but uh, Mason Marchment with seven goals so far. He was a nice acquisition for the stars. Dallas, much to the surprise of many, uh, off to a great start this year. Yeah, um, uh, a big, big part of them um, is bounce backs from Tyler Sagan and Jamie Ben. Um, you know they have gigantic contracts, and they need those guys to be uh, to be playing well. Um, you know, I don't think they want to buy either of those two out, and so they're just hoping that uh, um, their hot hot streak continues and. And like you meant, like name you mentioned, Mason Marchment. I think he's really boosted Tyler Sagan too because they've been been playing uh, together. And uh, um, you know they have an amazing decor too. Miro Heiskanen is is one of the best defensemen uh, in the league for sure. Our old buddy Ryan Suter is still a part of that uh, decor, and uh, um, you know you know he's he's playing well. And um, you know they have a Vesna level goalie in Jake Ottinger the, that can can save you in a lot of games as we saw in that play epic playoff series against Calgary last season. And they're just building on it. And uh, Rupe hints, uh, you know, one of the best centers in, in, in the conference too. So um, yeah, they're, they're loaded. Um, they're ready for a run and uh, uh, great uh, decision to go with the, with the new coach there too. And so Peter DeBoer, um, you know, he's a veteran coach in this league as has brought a lot of teams to playoffs. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think it was just time for Rick, Rick, Rick bonus to, to move on to a different organization. Good for him getting another job. And in Winnipeg, as we know, the NHL loves to recycle head coaches. Um, so yeah. And they're both, uh, both, uh, both teams are off to good starts. So it kind of, it worked out. It certainly did. <laughs> yes. It certainly did. I don't know if that's a smile or a grimace from bonus, <laughs> but uh, certainly after the Wilds dispatched the Jets, it was probably more of a grimace. But yes. going to be a tough week, but mm-hmm. uh, we'll see how the Wild do as they continue to navigate here through the end of November into December already. We're already past the quarter pole of the season. It's amazing. <laughs> Time is just flying. But that's going to do it for today's episode. So now that your first listen is done, Make sure you check out the Lockdown Sports Today podcast to get the full lowdown on everything in the wide world of sports all in one place. Lockdown Sports Today is available on your favorite podcast platforms just like Lockdown Wild. We're available absolutely free of charge, so make sure you subscribe on YouTube and follow on your favorite podcast platform so you don't miss out on any new episodes throughout the week. We are keeping you up to date with new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Lockdown Sports Podcast Network.